Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna show you how to install a universal drive shaft assembly. Helping us out is our special guest, Frank Matthews. He's a mechanical engineer with Motion Industries Mill Services, which is Motion Industries Industrial Drive Shaft Repair and Build Center. And Frank, welcome to the set, man. How you doing? Doing great. What are we gonna learn today, Frank? Basically, we're gonna look at three common problems that we see in industry. I'm going to go through flange type connections on how critical that is. Okay. I'm also going to go through some mounting configurations that people don't often realize is incorrect to do, okay. which will include uh, aligned yoke gears and parallel flange faces. I'm going to handle making sure we have PPE on because we have to do that. So let's put that on. And remember, proper PPE, whatever the job calls for. We got our gloves and our glasses on for this one. Frank, it's all you. Where do you want to start? Basically, I want to look at uh, how to actually mount the drive shaft, which includes actually mounting on the hubs of the equipment that you're actually mounting to. Okay. So what we have here, as you see, this is a typical flange type mounting connection on a universal drive shaft. On this connection, it features equally spaced bolt holes. It has fastener sets that actually hook it to the actual rigid hub. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to show is that the bolts on this isn't actually what's transmitting the torque on the drive shaft. Okay, and we've got a, a little sample of this over here. So basically what we have here is mm -hmm. a, a sample setup of a universal flange type joint. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is the flange yoke with equally spaced holes. You have a piloting ring here right. that actually ensures that when you're mounting the assembly that it mounts properly, the holes are aligned, and you're ready to go to put your fastener set in for proper flange torque requirement. It's as simple as just sit, as just connecting it to the rigid hub and then using your proper bolt kits, which is supplied by your supplier or by mill services, whoever you got the universal drive shaft assembly from. Okay. And these bolts have got to be of the proper grade, either 10.9 or 8, depending on if it's a standard or metric drive shaft assembly. And it's as simple as once you get your pilot engaged, put the bolts in, and you're good to go. Now I notice we got a torque wrench over there, so that's something that I know has got to be critical. Make sure all the bolts are torqued properly. That's correct. So I'm I'm just gonna go through a trial run here. All right. This drive shaft here, we installed the bolts. Everything's good to go. I'm basically gonna have my torque rating that, that, that my supplier gave me. Then I'm actually just gonna go through each one, and I'm gonna torque it to the proper amount. Okay. Now we Simple kind of wouldn't that. reach over like that. We're yeah. just doing that so it's they true. can see that. But uh, you know, just make sure that that's done properly as you're putting together the drive shaft. True. Okay, what's next after we got that taken care of? Well, the next two critical things basically have to do with when you're actually mounting this and the com the setup and the configuration you use when you're actually mounting this drive shaft. Okay. Well, let's uh, get everything set up because I know you're going to turn that motor, and we got to lift yes. this up because we're showing some extreme angles right that's here, true. aren't that's we? That's true, and it helps exaggerate the concept that we're actually introducing. I got it to the height you wanted. What do yep. we got? So basically, when you install this drive shaft, you have to be aware that the, the actual yokes on this drive shaft assembly must be aligned. Okay. And usually these have to be aligned within one to two degrees in order for this drive shaft to operate properly. Mill Services provides phasing or alignment stickers on the drive shafts. That way, if while you're installing or when you're doing any kind of maintenance on the machine and your slip actually comes out of the drive shift assembly, mm -hmm. you will know where to put it back together to ensure you have these yokes phased correctly. So basically we're going to look here and I'm going to use this demonstrator to show how a line flange yokes makes everything work as it's properly designed to. So to first run, I'm going to turn it on, I'm going to use this card here and I'm going to actually listen to the frequency this carb makes on these sprockets. Oh, okay. So where I'm going to test, this, tr test the drive side, and it's going to be constant, electric motor. Everything's good. Now you try okay. your side there. So it sounds like a constant noise on yeah, both sides. constant speed. Everything's running great. Okay. Now we're actually going to mimic a the non-phase yokes to actually show what that does. So basically I'm going to misalign these yokes 90 degrees, just for example. So if a customer wasn't aware that this was a problem, they would look at this drive shaft installed and not realize that there's actually an issue. So what we're gonna do is run this assembly and just see how big of an issue this is. So I'm gonna try my side. It's gonna be constant like usual on the drive side. Everything's still good, now check your driven side. Oh, wow. Yes, makes quite a difference. 
Yeah, that was quite a difference right there. Yes. It's kind of like, whoa, whoa. So that, right does. there, you know it's out of phase. So, yeah, so you can just imagine just being in application. You know, if the customer is trying to drive any type of uh, driven equipment at a consistent speed. Vibrations oh, man. and things would it be even, shaking all over the it place. It even wears the drive shaft out assembly out faster because the whole drive shaft experiencing a pulsating torque on it. Okay, let's put it back to normal again and let's show yeah. the other way that proper that people don't realize that you know things are going wrong. And yes, we can sir. do that. I mean, we could actually just see and you know by the arrows as he said line them up. Yep. We just line up the arrows. Yep, the arrows. I'm just lining them up and now I'm properly phased, ready to go. All right, let's check it. Check it. Okay, he did it right. Everything's good. Now we're going to introduce a non-parallel flange face. So I'm basically just going to pivot this motor a couple of degrees to introduce a non-parallel flange face. But that's not much. You didn't move it that no, much. No, not much. Okay. But you're, you're going to see how much that actually affects the operation of this drive shaft. So I'm on my drive side, everything's good. Now try it on your side. There's that noise again. Yep. That's... Just from having non-parallel flange faces. So the customer should be aware that having those flange faces parallel and the correct alignment criteria on actually installing this is very important for running in the machine. Frank, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Frank's a mechanical engineer. He can help you out. And if you have any questions, call Frank or call your nearest Motion Industries branch location. They will be able to help you out. I can promise you that. Hopefully this will help you with your practical application. And um, PPE. We wore it all through the demonstration, and you should too. Whether it's a demonstration or stuff you're doing at work, always wear the proper PPE. And always look for other how-to videos from Motion Industries with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.